フォーカス Peace be upon you, Ramadan Kareem. That was the fifth time I've done that intro. I keep screwing it up. I'm blaming it on the fasting. So, as you guys all know, it's Ramadan. I'm still fasting, not eating from dusk till dawn. No, no, dawn till dusk. I always get those two confused. What tends to happen when you fast is everyone reacts to it differently. For me, I get, I, I don't have much of an issue with hunger. I just become a bit. Lethargic, a little bit tired. Sometimes I can't string a sentence when I'm talking to save my life. And I crave a lot of fruits and vegetables. And I crave a lot of chocolate, which makes no sense because those two are completely different food groups, obviously. And what tends to happen is that I start to obsess over things that I really want to eat after I break my fast that day. Lately, I've been obsessing over all my favorite. Chocolate bars, and I made a list of them the other day, my favorite chocolate bars, which include these are, of course, chocolate bars that anyone can get. That's sort of what you'd call the supermarket chocolate bars. For all people, chocolate bars. What's the word? Common? Common chocolate bar? So, my favorites. Are Kit Kat, Twix, Bounty, Snickers. Those are my four main favorite chocolate bars that you can get in any store, newsagent, dairy, whatever you want to call it. There is Mars Bar, but I have really strong issues with Mars Bar, which I'll discuss in a minute. And there is also the secret dark horse contender chocolate bar, the Milky Way, which I think is a very underrated chocolate bar. Whereas I think Mars Bars are completely. Overrated. So, because I was obsessing over chocolate bars while I was at work one day and thinking about them, I don't know why I made these connections. I, because I was thinking about how underrated Milky Bars are and how overrated Mars Bars are, I kind of decided to link all of these chocolate bars to celebrities. I don't know why. So, I figured out, just bear with me on this, okay, and let me know if you disagree. But Kit Kats are kind of like the Julia Roberts. Of chocolate bars. Everyone loves a Julia Roberts movie. Every time you see a Julia Roberts movie on TV, you just have to sit and watch it. If you start from the beginning, middle, or you're five minutes towards the end, you just want to watch it. It's a really good film. It's a really good chocolate bar. You cannot go wrong with a Kit Kat. You cannot go wrong with Julia Roberts. A Snickers bar is sort of full of energy and it's really funny. I don't know how a chocolate bar is funny, but I find it to be quite a funny chocolate bar. When you need a good hit of chocolate, you get a Snickers bar, right? So in my head, a Snickers bar is the equivalent of a Chris. Pratt. I was gonna say Chris Pine, but I mean Chris Pratt. Because any of Chris Pratt's movies, The Guardians of the Galaxy, Jurassic Park, Passengers, which, meh, Parks and Recreation, which is his TV show, and all the other stuff that he does, you just get a good, funny action, wholesome, good acting, sarcasm, interesting. And I feel like the Snickers bar combines all of those elements, but in food chocolate form, right? You have the nuts, you have the caramel, you have the chocolate. So a Snickers bar is really a Chris Pratt. Yeah? No? Yes? Twix bar. It's quite an old chocolate bar. It's been around for ages, right? It's layered, but it's also a classic. You have the biscuits, you have the caramel inside, you have the chocolate, you have the ridges on the chocolate, you have two bars, not one, which is always great. What will be the equivalent of that? In my head, it's George Clooney. George Clooney is cool, but he's distinguished and classic and older. He has layers, he looks very serious. But he's also really funny and sarcastic. He's kind of down to earth and cool, but he's also incredibly intelligent. I think he's into politics and stuff. And he just had twins, and there's two bars in the Twix, whatever. To me, Twix bar. George Clooney, yeah? Okay, bounty bars. Definitely an acquired taste. Not everyone's a fan of bounty bars. Some people don't even consider them a chocolate bar because if you look at the proportions, there's so much more coconut in comparison to the chocolate. And you have two little bars in there, which to me just makes no sense. Just make one big bar, right? It's like they know that not everybody can handle one large coconut bar. So let's split it in half just in case somebody has one part and they've had enough and they don't want the rest. So in my head, I think of a bounty bar as a Johnny Depp because Johnny Depp is also an acquired. Taste. Some people think he's a brilliant actor, but he just does these very dark, weird, scary kind of roles. Or people love him. And I feel like that is what a bounty bar is. You either love it, or you like a little bit of it, or you hate it. So that, that makes sense to me. And then we have Mars Bar. I'm not a fan of Mars Bar. I don't get the big deal. Why is everybody obsessed with them? They're not that great. The proportions are all wrong. There's like this much nougat, which is really good. There's that much caramel and the chocolate. I think a Mars Bar needs like a nice clean wafer right down the middle or at the bottom. It would be so much better if it had like a wafery biscuit in there, yeah? So anyway, a Mars Bar. The equivalent of a Mars Bar in the actor world, I think, a Will Smith. I am a huge fan of The Fresh Prince of Bel Air and I'm a huge fan of Men in Black, but then what? Especially over the last couple of years, Will Smith is great and everything, he's a good actor, 
everything's there, all the ingredients, but then he just keeps doing these roles. You're like, what the? Why didn't you go back to Independence Day? That's my question. Why didn't you do it? You should have gone back to Independence Day. That was your chance to redeem yourself from all the other crap movies that you've done. It's just a no-brainer, and he didn't do it. And then he got paid some insane amount of money, like 26 million, 30 million, I don't know, for Wild Wild West. The most horrendous film of all time. And even now, he's just... He just doesn't, I just don't get it. Like, why aren't you doing good movies? Mars bar, why aren't you a better chocolate bar? Why don't you have a wafer in the middle? It just frustrates me because I know Mars has so much potential as a chocolate bar, just as I know that Will Smith has so much potential as an actor. Whatever. Okay, a Milky Bar. Milky Bar is such a good chocolate bar. So underrated. It's got that great nougat stuff that you get in a Mars bar. It has this honey taste. It's a great portion of the chocolate around it. It's just so good. I can have like 20 of them and not feel disgusted. So who is the equivalent? for a Milky Way, definitely Elizabeth Moss. You guys, she is so good and amazing. She's such a great actress and I think she's so underrated. She doesn't get the praise and the spotlight as much as she deserves. She was in Mad Men. She was the receptionist. I forget her name in the, on that show and she ends up becoming something else. She's in that new show, The Handmaiden's Tale. She's amazing in it. She's also on Top of the Lake where she plays a detective. There's already season one and season two just came out. Top of the Lake, China Girl, I think it's called. And it premiered in Cannes. Cannes? Cons. She's amazing. She's awesome. She's a great actress. I think that she should be getting a lot more coverage and a lot more attention, more than Jennifer Lawrence, who I'm so sick of hearing about. So Milky Way, underrated as a chocolate bar. Elizabeth Moss, underrated as an actress. Other chocolate and acting comparisons I made is a Ferrero Rocher. Small, delicious, so many layers. You have the nuts, you have the chocolate, you have the biscuits, you have the little nut in the center, you have the, the chocolate mousse stuff, so good. Packaging, you have a little golden package paper foil thing and you have a little brown cupcakey flower thing and a little sticker on top. Definitely Meryl Streep. Every acting role she's in, you completely believe her. She has so many layers. Layers is the key and she can be rough and grainy, she can be smooth, she can be a nut, she can be like a chocolate mousse, all of it is in the Ferrero Rocher. Now, most of you know there's a white version of the Ferrero Rocher, the extra vanilla coconutty version. People take issue with that white chocolate Ferrero. I found that people have a real issue with coconut and chocolate. They're, it's very touch and go, yeah? Anyway, so that white Ferrero thing is an acquired taste. Some people are obsessed with it and they love it, or some people are not huge fans of it, but it also still has those same layers that I was talking about in the original Ferrero. So, in my head, I kind of thought of Benedict Cumberpatch. Benedict Cumberpatch. People love him or they just think he's weird or they don't get it, and he's not your conventional actor, not your conventional good-looking actor. People are obsessed with him, and that's how I feel the white Ferrero Rocher, the coconut one, is also perceived as. So to me, they're just a pair. Next, you have the Crunchy Cadbury Bar. I love Crunchy Cadbury Bars. I think they're so good. Even though the, portion, the proportions can be a bit too much and you assume that it's gonna be too sweet, it's just really good. And it's been around for a long time and you know it's gonna go places. And what's great about Crunchy Chocolate Bars is that you can break it up and have it on top on your hot chocolate. You can have it on top of a cake. So to me, the equivalent of a Crunchy Bar is Idris Elba. Because A, he's an amazing actor. B, he can do any role and do it really, really well. B, you can see him in so many different kinds of movies and TV shows. And C, he's just amazing and Crunchy Bars are amazing. So obviously they go hand in hand. I love Torbalon Bars, they're amazing. I think they're so unique and interesting. Even the chocolate is actually, you know, quite a classic chocolate with little bits of nougat in there, which are nice surprises when you're eating them. The way they're shaped with the triangles, it's just so interesting and it makes you feel like you're not eating as much chocolate. The packaging is great. It always feels fancier than it is. You would assume that I would pick some kind of Scandinavian an actor or actress because Tobolon's made somewhere in Sweden or Geneva or Swiss Swiss Alpi or something I don't know so to me the equivalent of a Tobolon bar is of course Margot Robbie is that how you say her name she's an amazing actress from the Wolf of Wall Street Tarzan Suicide Squad where she played the Harlequin she's amazing but when you first see her you're like whoa she's so attractive she's so hot because you have so many of these types in Hollywood right where they're very attractive and so you assume that's why they're in these movies and then they act and they're terrible but then you get Margot Robbie and she's an amazing actress she has the whole package. She's kind of exotic looking. She's Australian, but she does a great American accent. An all around great exotic classic chocolate bar. One of my favorite chocolate bars in the world is a picnic bar. They're so good. I'm not sure if they sell them everywhere, but basically it's like a better version of a Snickers bar. It's filled with like biscuit and nuts and cream. Toffee, or is it toffee? Yeah, it's toffee that's really hard and chocolate and it's just the most delicious chocolate bar you can get. It has every flavor, every sensation, every texture you can think of that deserves to be in a chocolate bar. To me, the actor or actress that 
is the equivalent of a picnic bar is definitely Whoopi Goldberg. She is a comedian, actress, TV talk show host. She is an activist. She has an Oscar, an Emmy, a Tony, and a Grammy. So basically, she can do everything. She's amazing. I feel like she's never wrong whenever she says any opinion. I'm, I completely agree with her. So to me, she is the equivalent of a picnic bar, which is one of my most favorite chocolate bars of all time. There are so many more chocolate bars I can talk about and so many actors and actresses I can compare them to. But uh, this is just a lowdown of what I've been thinking about uh, when I'm starving. Maybe you guys will agree with me. Maybe you won't. Let me know what you think. Which chocolate bars are your favorite? and which actor or actress do you equivalent them? Equivalent? Equivalent? Tolerate them with? Whatever.